the funeral of Queen Charlotte. Also known as Sophia Charlotte, Gracie and Knowles of history as the Queen of Great Britain and Ireland, marking her reign alongside King George III from the momentous day of their union on the 8th of September 1761 until her peaceful passing in 1818. Her marriage to George III also conferred upon her the title of Electress of Brunswick, Lunenburg, Hanover, before assuming the mantle of Queen of Hanover on the 12th of October 1814. Charlotte's legacy as Britain's longest-serving Queen Consort is undeniably remarkable, spanning an impressive tenure of 57 years and 70 days. Hailing from the ruling lineage of Mecklenburg-Strelitz, a duchy nestled in northern Germany, Charlotte's journey intertwined with this young and unmarried George III, who ascended to the British throne in 1760. In Charlotte, George found a suitable consort, although she was a minor German princess who was disinterested in the political sphere. The union between George III and Charlotte endured for 57 years, blossoming into a family that encompassed 15 children, a staggering 13 of whom thrived into adulthood. Among these were two future British monarchs, George IV and William IV. Furthermore, the family included Charlotte, Princess Royal, who later ascended to become Queen of Wittenberg, and Prince Ernest Augustus, who eventually donned the crown as King of Hanover. A connoisseur and benefactor of the arts, Charlotte carved her identity as an amateur botanist, contributing significantly to the expansion of Kew Gardens. Her introduction of the Christmas tree to Britain, festooning one of the delight of children in Windsor during a Christmas gathering in 1800, stands as a charming testament to her cultural influence. Despite her illustrious contributions, Charlotte bore the weight of distress caused by her husband's recurring bouts of physical and mental afflictions, which eventually became a permanent burden in his later years. Her poignant bond with Queen Marie Antoinette of France, intertwined with the tumultuous era of the French Revolution, undoubtedly adding emotional strain to Charlotte's life. As the King's health declined, her eldest son George was appointed regent in 1811. Tragically, in November 1818, Charlotte passed away, her son George by her side, and remarkably, George III followed suit a little over a year later possibly unaware of his beloved wife's demise, marking the end of an era deeply entrenched in history's pages. The funeral of Queen Charlotte, held on the 2nd of December in the year 1818, was a ceremonial event of profound significance and majestic grandeur. Commemorating the passing of Queen Charlotte, who had peacefully departed this life on the 17th of November of the same year. This solemn occasion unfolded within the hallowed halls of St George's Chapel, a sacred place where the final rites were conducted to honour and pay tribute to the revered Queen. It was here that Queen Charlotte found her eternal rest, enclosed within the newly constructed royal vault, a testament to enduring love and a royal legacy envisioned by her husband, the esteemed King George III, who had initiated its creation back in 1804. A masterful depiction of the royal vault, crafted by the skilled hands of Alfred Young Nutt, the diligent surveyor at the chapel, in the year 1849, captures the essence of the vault's original manifestation. Over time, alterations and renovations were undertaken, particularly towards the end of the 19th century. These adjustments involved the relocation of the coffins, the removal of their former velvet coverings and the installation of new polished oak in sturdy ironwork, transforming the resting place into an embodiment of regal elegance and permanence. The life of Queen Charlotte commenced on the 19th of May 1744 within the confines of a modest court in northern Germany. Born as Sophia Charlotte of the House of Mecklenburg-Strelitz, she embraced the royal mantle at a youthful age of 17, entering into matrimony with King George III on the 8th of September 1761. Thus she extended to the position of Queen of Great Britain. 
Through a reign that transferred over 50 years, both Queen Charlotte and King George III stood witness to and navigated through pivotal historic events of global magnitude. These encompass the tumultuous era of the Seven Years' War, the expansion and consolidation of the British Empire in India, the fervour and upheaval of the American War of Independence, the seismic waves of the French Revolution and the convulsions of the Napoleonic Wars. Among these monumental events, Windsor emerged as, as a sanctuary for King George III, Queen Charlotte and their expansive family. The deep-seated connection to Windsor not only manifested in their residential abode, but also in their decision to commission the construction of the Royal Vault, a sanctuary envisioned as their ultimate resting place. However, at the time of their youngest daughter, Princess Amelia's passing in November 1810, the Royal Vault remained incomplete. Architect James Wyatt diligently toiled on constructing a corridor and vault beneath the oldest section of the chapel, later transformed into the Albert Memorial Chapel by Queen Victoria. The Royal Vault and Architectural Marvel mirrored the designs of the Hanoverian Royal Vault in Westminster. The endeavour led by Wyatt and his nephew Geoffrey culminated in the creation of the largest private burial vault in England during that period. The vault boasted a subterranean corridor and a vault platform entrance in the floor of the choir, meticulously engineered to facilitate a, a gradual descent through mechanisation. Princess Amelia's remains were transferred to the completed vault in 1810, followed by Augusta Duchess of Brunswick, the king's sister, in 1813. Tragically, the vault welcomed the remains of Princess Charlotte of Wales, the granddaughter of the King and Queen, along with her stillborn son, after the untimely demise in November 1817. The passing of Queen Charlotte on the 17th of November 1818 marked a poignant period of mourning. Her mortal remains lay in state at Kew Palace, her final sanctuary, in the last days of her earthly sojourn. The day of her funeral service, the 2nd of December 1818, was an event steeped in solemnity and reverence. The procession from Kew to Windsor commenced at 8pm, featuring a hearse drawn by eight noble horses. The procession paused at Frogmore to receive dignitaries, including the Princes of Blood Royal. Notably absent from the funeral was the King, incapacitated by a prolonged illness, while the duties fell upon the shoulders of the Prince of Wales, acting as the Prince Regent at the time. The guest list was exclusive, permitting only 54 members of the general public to pay their respects. Forty yeomen, the Knights of the Garter, and individuals intimately connected with the royal family were among those granted entry. The medical attendants of the Queen, King and Prince Regent, alongside the ladies of the bedchamber, Keeper of Robes and other devoted attendants of the late Queen also graced the occasion. The funeral service exuded solemn splendour, accentuated by the harmonious and emotive performance of the choir. The Dean of St George's Chapel, the Honourable Henry Hobart, delivered the burial service with profound sadness, evoking a sense of reverence and respect. As the choir's harmonious melodies reverated, the platform supporting the Queen's casket embarked on a gradual descent, orchestrated by what the new monthly magazine described as impeccable machinery, culminating at 25 minutes past nine. The graceful and deliberate descent of the casket marked the conclusion of a ceremony steeped in dignity and homage a fitting tribute to a revered queen who left an undeniable mark on history.